Hello everyone and welcome back to 1970 Palma de Mallorca Interzonal Tournament. It's round 10. Uh, Bobby Fischer with the black pieces faces uh, the, the Hungarian Botvinnik, Lajos Sportish, as they called him, uh, due to his uh, exclusive, exclu exclusive positional style. Now, uh, after five consecutive wins, uh, Bobby Fischer uh, got two draws and then finally in round nine he suffers his first loss uh, at the hands uh, of the Danish Grandmaster Bent Larsen. This is round 10. Like we said, he faces Lyle Sportish, who, aside from being a strong Grandmaster, which is pretty much self-explanatory, as he's playing in the Interzonal Tournament, uh, actually uh, qualified for the Interzonal Tournament uh, 12 consecutive times. Uh, so that's uh, really insane, and he qualified for the candidate, uh, Candidates uh, Tournament uh, 8 times. Uh, so let's check out this game. Uh, Portish has the white pieces, and let's see uh how how uh, fisher will will fare against the hungarian botvinnik uh we have d4 knight to f6 c4 e6 uh, knight to f3 the anti nimzo uh, and c5 transposing into the benoni uh, we have d5 pawn captures on d5 c captures on d5 and g6 uh, knight to c3 bishop to g7 this is all pretty standard uh, bishop to f4, uh, we have d6, and uh, queen to a4 check. Uh, you can't, uh, like, immediately take advantage of the d6 pawn with something like knight to b5. Uh, there's really not a good way to defend this pawn, but uh, queen to a5 check will force the knight to go back to c3 uh, as it's uh, attacked on b5, and after knight e4, it's actually black who will get the upper hand. Uh, so after d6, we have queen to a4 check, Fisher blocks, bishop d7, uh, and here we have queen to b3. Uh, queen to c7, uh, and now e4, so still pretty much all standard stuff. Uh, we have castles by Fisher, and now bishop to e2. Fisher goes a6, uh, preparing b5, and here, interestingly, whenever uh, you face the Benoni and someone plays a6, most more often than not, you will play a4. Uh, but here, a4 uh, is not the best move. Portish goes for, for the best move, which is e5. As Fisher did allow it, uh, Portish plays it. D captures on e5, bishop captures on e5, attacking the queen. Uh, you do have to move the queen. Queen to c8 is played, uh, and here Portish castles. Uh, you could uh, think, okay, maybe I, maybe I want to go a4 here, prevent uh, Fisher from playing b5, uh, but uh, there's, there's no reason to do it just yet. Uh, so instead Portish castles, and now Fisher goes bishop to g4. If Fisher did try to take this opportunity that Portish did not play a4 to push b5, uh, then Portish can simply counter it with a4. And uh, it, it's actually Portish who is much more developed here. Uh, for example, after captures, captures, knight to b6 already a threat. Uh, so bishop captures, rook captures, and uh, now after something like knight bd7, bishop to f4. Uh, Fisher would have two isolated pawns uh, on the queen side after something like rook f to a1. Uh, it would be very hard to defend these pawns. So after castles, we have bishop to g4 by Fisher, uh, h3. Uh, we have captures, captures, and now knight b to d7. Fisher gave up the bishop pair, but uh, he will soon win one of the bishops. Uh, bishop to d6, attacking the rook, rook e8, and now a4. Uh, only now does Portish uh, go for this a4 resource. Uh, knight to e5, and here you could play something like bishop to e2 to avoid this trade. Uh, if you don't, if you play... Well, there's really no good place to move it. You're not going to move it to d1, uh, meaning uh, moving it to d4 is pretty pointless. So uh, Fisher definitely wants to grab this bishop. And uh, even if you play something like totally weird, then, then even c4, knight to d3 would be a possibility. Uh, but okay, bishop captures on e5, rather giving up the dark square bishop, rook captures on e5, and now... Uh, this uh, was the critical moment uh, of the game at the time this game was played, uh, but today uh, not, not so much because uh, the, the engines don't really agree with the evaluation of, of uh, you know, of grandmasters in those days. Uh, here Portish played uh, rook 8 d1 and uh, this is kind of the critical moment uh, where, they, where they said that he should have played rook f to d1, he, that he should have kept this rook uh, on the a file to, control, to keep controlling the queen side and to develop this rook. Uh, and then they said that after something like rook b8, preparing b5, uh, per, you prevent b5 by playing a5. And that uh, now, while uh, the, this rook is very nice on d1, very active, that uh, this rook will be very useful uh, uh, on the queen side to c keep controlling the queen side. Uh, but okay, uh, rook a to d1 was played here by Portish. We have rook to b8 uh, and now d6. 
uh, opening up uh, those lines, maybe maybe preparing knight d5. The bishop is now eyeing the b7 pawn. Uh, Fisher now goes b5, a capture, some b5, pawn capture, some b5, and rook f to e1. Uh, Fisher exchanges, rook captures, rook captures, and now comes bishop to f8. Uh, a lot of moves were possible here as the b5 pawn is attacked. You could push b4, you could push c4. Uh, a lot of interesting ideas, but Fisher plays uh, the best idea. Bishop to f8. Uh, we have knight capture some b5 uh, as uh, the pawn is attacked twice. And now, of course, you cannot capture here with the idea, okay, the knight is pinned. Uh, well, no, it's not. Uh, the knight can freely capture, and after you capture the queen, knight will capture your queen. After you capture here, uh, white will have a bishop for a pawn with an easily winning position. So after knight to b5, Fisher first plays queen to d7. Now with a double attack against the b5 knight, uh, you have to defend the knight as now the knight really is pinned. Uh, so bishop to e2. Uh, and now comes bishop captures on d6. Now the knight is still pinned, knight cannot capture here. Uh, we have bishop to c4 and now Fisher moves back, bishop to f8. Uh, we have rook to d1 attacking Fisher's queen, uh, queen to e7 and now comes queen to d3. Uh, and it was in this position that they agreed to a draw. So after two draws and one defeat to Bent Larsen, uh, Fischer faces yet another draw against uh, the, the Hungarian Botvinnik Lars Portis. And uh, okay, it's uh, the material is completely equal. Uh, it's a light square bishop against a dark square bishop. So perhaps uh, there could be something if the position was a bit different. But here they both agree that it's completely drawn. After black plays something like rook b7, uh, adding further defense to the f7 pawn, there's really no breaking through here. The queen and bishop are uh, protecting this pawn that's on a dark square. You can't really use your light square bishop for anything here. Uh, all of Fisher's pieces are on dark squares. Uh, there, there's really no way to break through here. So uh, they agreed uh, to, to a draw here and okay, a very nice game, but uh, even with uh, two, uh, three draws and uh, and the loss, Fisher is still in the lead in this tournament, so uh, all, is, all is well for Bobby. And like I said, you don't have to win the interzonal to qualify for the candidates, uh, you just have to make it to the, to the top six uh, spots. So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. We're going to cover uh, round 11 uh, very shortly. And uh, it's interesting, uh, Lars Portis is still alive and well. To my knowledge, uh, he's now 81 years old. And uh, while he still plays, uh, you know, occasionally for fun, uh, he mostly uh, enjoys uh, singing operas as a hobby. And in 2004, he was awarded uh, the Sportsman of the Nation Award, which is the Hungary's highest national sports uh, achievement award. So, uh, you know, al always uh, nice when, when a chess player achieves uh, such an honor. So, yeah, uh, I would like to thank uh, Agad Matar's dog, uh, Gil Troitsa, Mark Budwig, uh, Philip uh, Wemschulte, uh, and Mitchell Weintraub for a contribution to my channel. Thank you uh, a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon uh, with round 11 of the 1970 Palma de Mallorca Interzonal Tournament, and perhaps with uh, another round of the Beale Chess Festival. See you soon.